All right, hi everyone. Recently, Julian Kaspar, member of the Blender team, has put out this paint mode design discussion and feedback post on the Blender Dev Talk website. So the point about this is to let people know where their thoughts are for making the new paint mode that's coming to Blender alongside the new texture workflow improvements. We're also providing an opportunity to get feedback on it from the community. So we're going to take a look through this post. I'm going to explain the main points to you. And then if you have any feedback or opinions you want to share with the Blender development team, then you can go ahead and put them down in the comments of this post. And that'll be your chance to provide some ideas and maybe have an impact over the decision making. So let's take a quick look through this. Since texturing became one of the main development goals for 2022, we did a video recently outlining their main goals. There have been a few improvements in progress. If you click on that link, it will take you to a page where you can see the different tasks they've been working on, so you can keep track of the progress over time. An important missing part of that design is still the paint mode itself. This post will explain the current conclusions and open questions of where we are heading for the most important functionality. By sharing this, we hope to get more feedback and suggestions from the community. So what are the major points? So first of all, the paint mode is going to be based on the sculpt mode and what that means is it's going to look functionally visually like the sculpt mode currently is in blender and i think that's quite a nice design direction because the sculpt mode if we go and remind ourselves by going down here looks like this so we've got all of the lovely icons on the left there representing the different types of painting modes in this case sculpting modes and then there'll be various parameters around the interface where you can modify how those brushes are affecting the object so the paint mode will be very similar in this regard it means it will inherit a lot of its features and fast performance the mode will replace the existing texture paint and vertex paint modes, so those two are going away entirely. The paint mode is going to take over those, and it will provide the full tool set for artistic painting of color attributes and image textures. What you will paint onto the object can be set via the canvas selector. Now I'm not entirely sure what the canvas selector is, but let's take a look. So if we play this through, it says sculpt mode here at the top, but just pretend this says paint mode. And then we'll have the different icons here for the different types of painting modes, but obviously these are beautiful none icons will be replaced with something else. So we have the object being painted on here, right now it's Suzanne's head and up in the top right here we have the canvas drop down the mode is set to material and then I'm assuming here we're selecting the different materials although I'm not too sure what's going on here like are these the different shaders inside of the material are these different layers are these different textures inside of the materials which we can paint onto individually and then save them I think it'd be nice if there was a bit more clarity there but I'm assuming these are the different textures so you're painting onto them and then I guess you can just press save all images to save the changes you've just made. So that's essentially what that drop down does is you're choosing the different canvases, I guess, if you want to substitute that word for the textures, which you can paint onto. So let's go back to the post. So the tool set, to cover all workflows, the tools need to be extensive. A few tools and general operators will be the same as the sculpt mode, like masking, face sets, and auto masking features. That makes sense. But overall, the toolbar would include these most essential tools, the paint brush, the draw brush, the projection brush, the erase brush, smear, blur, clone, draw, mask, sample, mask by color, color filter, gradient, and gesture tools. So the paint brush would be the main one you'll use for doing the different types of painting effects. All right, so masking modes. In the current painting modes, there are very various ways of masking. Including all of these in their current form in a single paint mode would lead to a muddled and confusing design. But still, these ways of masking should be supported. Masking per vertex, per face corner, based on selection, and based on texture, which is basically the stencil masking one. So here's what they're proposing for the masking. Up here at the top, by the paint mode, you'll be able to see these different selection modes, which basically represents like the edit mode selection. Something it seems they're going for with the visual design of this is to make things as consistent across Blender as possible. So the proposal is to add free easily accessible masking modes which can be switched with the number keys. This directly parallels the selection modes in edit mode, grease pencil and the UV editor. And just like in these other modes they should be interchangeably usable for intuitive and fast masking. I think that's a pretty good idea. The free modes would let you mask vertices, faces and pixels and this feature should replace the current stencil mask but with full support for sculpt mode masking features. So those mask features are more for the loose and temporary masks which is similar to selection in edit mode and stuff like that but for more permanent masking it would be preferred to use image textures and use those as masks in the material, which makes more sense. We've done all sorts of masking in our material videos in the past, so that kind of workflow would still apply. But that might be tricky for people that are coming into Blender doing texture painting that don't really understand the node-based system. So I'll kind of wait and see what the actual preferred workflow for permanent masking would be like once this is all set up. So on this page, there are a few open questions you can take a look at. These are things that they're kind of not sure about or things which are more discussion points, which I think they're more interested in you providing feedback about. So we're not going to go through those. So syncing edit mode selection. A very useful feature on the current painting modes is that the mask and selection are synced. This way, masks can be much more precisely created in edit mode. So I think this is more about keeping continuity between the different mode contexts. 
so while switching between edit mode should not be required, masking in paint mode should be intuitive enough, some workflows rely on this for painting precise attributes and technical textures. So keeping this functionality will be a priority, so it's all about keeping the consistency between these modes. Supporting this will not be straightforward, paint mode mask can be either per face corner floating points or RGB image textures, or edit mode selections are boolean values, so they need to find a way to kind of connect those together. So that's more of a technical question, more about kind of keeping the consistency between different data types. But the next thing we're coming to here might be a bit of a controversial subject, ooh. So inverted masking. The typical workflow issue when using masks is that users mask a selection of their mesh and then invert the mask. In most cases, the areas you mask are the ones you do want to edit. So a long time proposed change can finally be implemented by inverting the behavior of masks in general. This would also make it much easier to sync selections and masks since they both define the elements you can edit. Okay, so you know how in Blender at the moment when you mask something, you're drawing a selection which you don't want to modify. So you're essentially drawing the mask on, but like the mask you don't want to use. And apparently that's a bit confusing. But the thing is, a lot of us are already used to that. I guess just like right click select. So what the proposal is, we just swap that functionality entirely and make it so when you're drawing the mask, you're drawing what you do want to edit. Now I think obviously it depends what kind of stuff you're working on because sometimes you want one, sometimes you want the other. I think a good example of like an ambiguous use case for that would be kind of painting faces or sculpting faces rather, where if you want to mask out like the mouth or like different parts of the face because they're quite delicate and you don't want to modify them when you're doing like large changes elsewhere, sometimes you want to actually sculpt on the mouth. So so when you click to draw your mask, you want that to be active, but sometimes you don't want to do that. You want to mask out the mouth so you don't accidentally ruin it while working elsewhere on the face. So in that case, you want to do the opposite. So I don't think it's a case that one of these is necessarily better than the other. I think it really depends what type of artwork you're working on. It might be more confusing for people that are already used to a certain type of mask behavior. However, if it makes it easier to sync the selections and masks for like these extra new features, then maybe it would be better to change the mask function functionality in general to have it so where you're painting masks that's where you should be able to make active changes. What do you think about that? So open questions. The name mask might end up confusing if the behavior is flipped. You are no longer masking areas then you are masking everything else. Renaming them to selection might be a good change especially if masks are synced with edit mode selections. So again keeping the consistency. Are these good changes to be making to keep the continuity between the different modes? But anyway putting that aside one thing I like here is mask overlay color. The mask overlay should also be updated to make it more useful for painting workflows. So this is actually something that I was kind of unreasonably excited about between like the 2.7 to 2.8 changes. I really love like cool interface changes like gizmos and overlays and different colors and stuff like that. So I like the idea of being able to change the color for the mask. It's gonna make a lot more sense in this case because when you're painting things onto characters, the color of the mask may conflict with what you're painting. So if you're painting something dark and your mask is black, then that's not very useful, is it? So by adding a color option, it should be easier to customize the look of masks for texturing needs. Instead of only having a slider for multiplying black on top of masked areas, there should be options to mix in a custom color. Yes, I think everyone would generally agree with that. That would just be a good idea. As you can see here, for having quite a dark character, especially if you're previewing lighting in the scene as well, that could get quite confusing very quickly. The brighter mask in this case is much more visible. All right, so saving masks. A small addition that is much requested and would end up very useful is to save and load masks for later use. Yes, fantastic. This is useful for when an intricately created mask is discarded and that would waste like a lot of time. So being able to save those different masks is just yeah a good idea generally all around. This would be as simple as saving geometry based masks as generic face corner flow attributes. Since pixel based masks would require an image texture, it is already easy to replace and store them as well. So yeah, that's fine. Now this next section is about ID maps and face sets. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but ID maps and face sets are like very important for doing texture painting and for doing texture painting across different softwares as well. We'll just read a bit of it quickly. An important feature that will be necessary to implement with the upcoming texture layer design are ID maps. They are already very similar in their use to face sets and can help in effortlessly creating masks and layering materials. There are some issues with ID maps relating to anti-aliasing and having things like bleeding between different sets. The proposal will be 
instead to create a unique version of this concept in the form of pixel sets within Blender. Instead of saving a single image, we would save a set of grayscale masks that are auto-normalized to avoid overlaps between them. So basically, they're kind of interested in adding a new type of set alongside face sets, which are called pixel sets, and this would be a way of ID mapping things. The main question here would be, how can ID maps be imported and exported while Blender uses pixel sets internally? So they need to try and find a way to take the general concept of ID maps, which is present across different softwares and kind of integrate that into Blender in some way. All right, so dynamic overlays. Just like mentioned before with the mask overlays, it's not ideal to have the color information on the object obscured. This was already a long-term concern with face sets and should finally be addressed with the paint mode. So if you're creating different collections of these face sets, and you want to have them visible in your mesh, like we currently have with the sculpt mode. Again, with the painting, that may get in the way and it may kind of disturb your painting process. You won't get a good representation of the color properly. So a proposal is to make them kind of invisible-ish, if you want, but to have them outlined like this. So you'd basically be able to have the contours on the faces there, but be able to modify the opacity of them. So what we're looking at here would be the contours at 100% opacity. You would then be able to reduce them to make them more faded. So you'd be able to see generally what parts of the object are in what different types of sets, and they'd still be kind of color coordinated there, but they'd be much less intrusive. So you'd still be able to paint appropriately over the object. I think that'd be quite a cool idea. Again, I like these user interface additions. So coming down to the bottom a bit, we have the image editor, and they say that while the image editor is important, it's not the primary focus, but again, with the continuity between different modes, some changes may need to be made to this. And that's generally the end of the post. So again, if you have any thoughts and feedback, you can go ahead and kind of add it to the post. And maybe if your idea is good and it's worth considering, then it may be taken on board. But I think it's quite nice that they are open to this discussion and this engagement. So hopefully that gives you an overview for what the paint mode might be like in the future of Blender. I imagine this will be more exciting for people that are interested in texture painting. So yeah, let me know what you think as well in the comments below. If you made it this far, the emoji for this video is going to be a paintbrush because of course, what else would it be? So if you put that down in the comments, I'll be able to see who made it this far. Feel free to check out my other videos to learn more about Blender, how to improve your artwork, and maybe you can check out my website to see what kind of tools and resources I have for you, both free and paid. Or sign up to my Patreon to help support my work and get your name put permanently on this piece of evolving artwork. So thanks for watching everyone, have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.